Everyone in this school knows to step aside when the goth girl is on the move. She strides down the school hallway, confident that no one will challenge her as the undisputed ruler of this high school. It's not just her dark wardrobe or her black nails and eyeliner that intimidate the other students. Her domineering attitude and sharp tongue make her feared. She brushes past a gaggle of underclassmen who wilt under her devastating gaze. Beat it, dorks, she hisses, jerking her head to indicate that they should get out of her way. The other students disperse instantly, afraid the chance really getting an earful. Her terrible reputation means that no one ever makes trouble for the goth girl, but it's more than just her attitude that keeps her on top. It's also all those rumors around her. The rumors started last year, just after a new transfer student arrived in their school. She was a younger classman who shared the goth girl's same dark fashion sense and sensibilities. Students even saw the younger girl occasionally hanging out with the school's resident goth population. But it was no secret that the goth girl didn't like her. Maybe she felt like this younger girl was homing in on her territory or even angling to take her place among the goth crew. Whatever the case, other students couldn't help but notice how the goth girl's lip quivered or her eyes flashed whenever the younger girl tried to worm her way into the goth gang's meetups. Then, one day, the younger girl didn't come home from school. The younger girl's parents reported her missing and organized a whole search party. The police spent weeks tracking down every lead, desperately looking for anything that might tell them what became of the missing girl, but found nothing. Rumors spread around school that the goth girl had something to do with it. After all, hadn't the younger girl been her biggest rival? Hadn't she always hated the younger girl? And if anyone at this school would have had the chutzpah to actually do something sinister, it would be her, right? Despite all the gossip, though, no evidence ever surfaced to link the goth girl to the disappearance. The police even interviewed her several times, but she always denied knowing anything. Yeah, I didn't like that little brat, she said in the police interview. She was always getting underfoot and thinking that she could hang with us. But that doesn't mean I did anything to her. I mean, it's not like I would have really wanted to hurt her. The goth girl concluded her statement with a knowing smirk, as if she was pleased with herself for getting away with murder. But you can't build a case out of a smirk. So even if the police suspected anything, they were forced to let her go. Eventually, life at school returned to normal. Other than a few fading missing child posters still fixed to telephone poles around town, most students eventually forgot about their missing classmate. But the goth girl's fearsome reputation persisted. Could she have actually had something to do with that younger girl's mysterious disappearance? Now that other students thought she might have actually killed someone, they naturally found her even more intimidating. The goth girl didn't mind, though. After all, she already thought most of the other students were normie losers anyway, so she liked that they gave her a wide berth. The goth girl walks toward the end of the hallway, pushing open a designated fire exit door and slipping out behind the school. Today, the other goths are hanging out behind the school building. They nod curtly as the goth girl joins them. What's going on, losers? She says, adopting an aura of bored detachment. I was just telling them that there's this haunted game you can download says the goth boy. It's all messed up, like, the game knows all your worst secrets and the more you play, the more it taunts you. Then when you finish, you just disappear. The other goths snicker at the story. None of them really believe it, but it makes for a fun, spooky tale to help set the atmosphere as the sun sets. But one girl is more skeptical than the rest, to the point that she's almost insulted by how obviously fake this story is. What do you mean you just disappear? Asks the girl. The boy shrugs. I don't know. I just know that no one ever sees them again. I don't believe that at all, says the goth girl. That sounds made up. No, no, says the boy. It's 100% real. It's called the Book of Tamlin. Okay, sure, whatever you say. And who exactly is Tamlin? The boy shrugs. I don't know. Clearly, I haven't played it since I'm still here. The girl rolls her eyes. That's ridiculous. I'll show you right now. She whips her cell phone out of her backpack and starts to thumb through the app store until she sees it. The Book of Tamlin. It's right there in the store. That just makes this whole story seem even sillier. She would expect that if there were a real haunted app. It would only be accessible via the dark web or maybe a strange glitch that randomly installed it into doomed victims' phones. But it's right here for anyone to download. With a skeptical smirk on her face, she punches the button to begin the installation. It's right here in the app store, says the goth girl. Any of you chickens gonna play? The other goths eye each other nervously. Sure, they were all pretty quick to dismiss the ominous story about this weird game before. But now that their friend is challenging them to actually play it, they don't feel quite so confident. 
The goth girl snorts derisively. She wonders why she bothers hanging out with these posers. They're the closest thing that she has to friends, since so few other students even dare approach her. But what does a bossy prima donna like her really need with friends anyway? She watches as the game loads up the intro screen, and then gameplay begins. She snorts again. The Book of Tamlin appears to be a hidden object game, where the point is to discover various objects hidden in a larger image. This is baby stuff, thinks the goth girl. Find the ten black cats in the cemetery! instructs the game as it pulls up a cartoony image of a graveyard. The goth girl's finger hovers over the screen, and she quickly taps it whenever she spots a black cat crouching behind one of the pixelated tombstones. Is this supposed to be scary? The screen fades, and an empty room with a pair of doors fades in. The goth girl intuits that she's supposed to pick one to advance to the next screen. Rolling her eyes, she selects the door on the left. The next scene looks familiar. Too familiar. It's a bedroom. Her bedroom, in fact. She recognizes the dark decor and the black clothing thrown on the floor. She narrows her eyes suspiciously. Surely that's just a crazy coincidence, right? She eyes the other goths, but they don't give any indication that they were expecting this twist. Are they playing a trick on her? Find the outfits that make your parents ashamed to be seen with you, says the instructions. She grits her teeth. What's the deal with this stupid program insulting her? She knows that her parents don't exactly approve of her fashion choices, but this stupid game can't know that. It's probably just guessing that any young person who plays a game will probably have had quarrels with their parents about the way they dress. That's pretty normal, right? Again, the empty room with the two doors appears. This time, the goth girl chooses the one on the right. The next screen after that is a picture of a pretty garden, and the instructions say to pick out ten pretty flowers. The next is a barnyard, with instructions to find five cows. The goth girl starts to relax. That weird screen with her room must have just been a fluke. Otherwise, this game seems pretty mundane. But the next screen makes the goth girl's face go as white as a sheet. Her eyes bug out of her head, and sweat starts to beat on her forehead. No. No way. There's no way that this next screen could be real. The image that appears is familiar to her. It's a real-life place. She knows, because she's been there. It's an image of a particular ravine deep in the local woods. People sometimes throw old garbage down there, so it's full of old washing machines and wrecked cars. Years ago, an old oak tree fell across the chasm, and now the dead log functions as a makeshift bridge. Sometimes kids dare one another to cross it. The instructions read, Find the girl who wanted to be a part of your club. The goth girl doesn't need to search the image to know what she'll find. She knows, deep in her heart, that the hidden object that she's being instructed to find will be a broken body lying at the bottom of the ditch, half hidden under old blankets and debris. How could this game know? She was so careful. She remembers last school year when that younger girl kept trying to usurp her place in her clique. It made her so mad. But that younger girl seemed to look up to her, to think of her as the leader of the group and the one who she needed to impress in order to be accepted. That was good. The goth girl knew she could use that to her advantage. She told the younger girl to meet her in the woods by the old ravine late at night. Of course, it was nothing sinister. It was just for a little initiation test to prove that the younger girl could take her place as part of their gang. The younger girl was only too excited for her test. The goth girl was waiting at the ravine when her younger rival finally arrived. I came as fast as I could, said the younger girl. What do you need me to do? Listen, I see how you want to hang out with us, said the goth girl. But you have to prove yourself if you want to be part of our group. But you have to understand, us goths, we embrace the darkness. We're not scared of the void. We only take the coolest and the bravest, the kids who aren't afraid of death. So you have to show me that you're willing to look eternity in the eye. All you have to do to join us is to cross this ravine over that log over there. She pointed at the fallen log. The younger girl looked frightened, but she nodded. The goth girl half expected her to turn tail and run home, but she was surprised to see her rival make her way toward the log. Maybe she wasn't as much of a poser as the goth girl thought. The goth girl didn't mean for anything bad to happen. She really only wanted to scare the younger girl. Maybe she could freak her out enough that she wouldn't want to hang out with them anymore, and then she wouldn't have to deal with that little pest anymore. The younger girl clambers up atop the log and slowly starts walking across the deep gorge, carefully placing one foot in front of the other. But the peeling bark of the old log is more slippery than it looks, and it's hard to keep her footing in the dark. The younger girl makes it almost halfway across the ravine before she loses her footing. With a yelp, she lurches to the side and falls down the slope, tumbling head over heels and landing amongst the garbage with a sickening crunch. The goth girl screamed in shock, 
She stared down in the ravine, seeing the younger girl lying still at the bottom, her neck bent at an impossible angle. It was obvious that the fall had killed her instantly. The goth girl knew she was in trouble. Or was she? Nobody knew she was out here. Nobody knew that she'd asked the younger girl to meet her here. All she had to do was keep her mouth shut, and nobody could pin this on her. The plan worked. She worked out her alibi and stuck to it during all the police interviews, never deviating, practicing her story until it sounded natural. The cops fell for it, clearing her as a suspect before moving on in their investigation. For a whole year, she had carried this terrible secret. Of course, it got easier over time. She gradually convinced herself that the whole thing was a terrible accident. It couldn't have been prevented. She had nothing to feel guilty about. And yet, somehow, this game knew. This game knew exactly what she had done. The phone slips from her palsied fingers and drops to the ground. The other goths look at her in confusion. They've never seen their leader in such a state of terror. What could have spooked her so bad? Which of you made this dumb game? She snaps. It must have been one of you. Fess up. We don't know what you're talking about, says the goth boy. I already told you, it's supposed to be haunted and... I don't know what you think you know, but you don't know anything, shouts the goth girl, hysterical in her fear. Has she been found out? Was this entire game just an elaborate ruse to trick her into confessing her guilt? Well, she's not going to fall for it. She's still the queen boss of this school, and if any of these losers think that they can knock her off her perch with a silly game, they're dead wrong. What do you mean we don't know anything? The other goths are murmuring amongst themselves. Of course, they'd heard the rumors about their leader as well, but they never really gave them much credence. She may be a little sharp, but that doesn't make her capable of murder. But the way that this game had freaked her out so much is really beginning to make them wonder. The goth girl is frantic now, seeing her control slip away as the other kids begin to mull the possibilities. She can't believe this. She wonders desperately if someone was there that night to see the whole terrible accident play out. Or maybe she let something slip without knowing. What other explanation could there possibly be? I'm out of here. Leave me alone. Don't follow me, she yells as she stomps away. The other goths don't make any move to follow, intimidated by the wrath of their leader. But when the goth girl throws open the door to head back inside the school, she's confronted with an unexpected sight. Instead of the long gray hallway lined with lockers that she expected, she instead sees a single empty room. It couldn't be, but it looks exactly like the empty room from the game, the one that she glimpsed between levels. This isn't supposed to be here, she cries. Behind her, the other goths stare in confusion. They too recognize the room from the game, but they can't figure out for the life of them how it's managed to appear in real life. What's going on? Is her guilty mind playing tricks on her? No, that can't be. The reaction of the other goths shows that they see it too. She doesn't think she can trust her senses, but she also feels an overwhelming urge to step into that empty room. Don't go in, calls the goth boy, but it's too late. Internally, her rational mind is screaming at her to stay out, but she can't control her feet. She steps inside, and the door swings closed behind her. The goth boy runs to the door and yanks it open, hoping to help his terrified friend. But beyond the door, he sees nothing but the ordinary hallway that's always been there. The mysterious empty room is nowhere to be seen, and the goth girl has completely vanished with it. Not many people would say that SCP-1590, better known as the Book of Tamlin, is any fun. SCP-1590 is a downloadable app that has been designated as Euclid, and seven copies of the game are currently held by the Foundation in a containment locker for experimentation purposes. Whenever the Foundation discovers new instances of SCP-1590, information technicians initiate an immediate DDoS attack on the hosting server, and an MTF is to be sent in to appropriate all hardware. Any systems that were able to download copies of the game before the DDoS attack should be infected with the COM AMA computer virus to prevent unwitting innocents from playing the game. SCP-1590 is a one kilobyte program or application designed for use with touchscreen hardware such as tablets. Attempts to view SCP-1590's coding reveal only the numbers 1 through 66,666 in numerical order, but on the front end, SCP-1590 plays as a mostly ordinary video game in the hidden object puzzle genre. Like other hidden object puzzle games, the player is given a list of objects that they must find in a scene within an allotted amount of time. What makes SCP-1590 unusual, though? is that as the game progresses, the scenes and hidden objects become more personal to the player, often referencing traumatic or unsettling events from the player's life. It is not known how SCP-1590 is able to gain such intimate knowledge of a player, 
but since some players report that SCP-1590 seems privy to personal secrets that have never been revealed to another person, it is unlikely that it's just due to very good research on the part of the game's designers. The game always begins with the same dedication screen, containing the message, To Joey, who taught me how to be cool. The dedication continues, listing another name who almost made it out. The second name changes with every playthrough, but is always the name of the previous person to play the game. The dedication screen is followed by an animated cutscene with a humanoid silhouette standing on the deck of what appears to be an oil tanker. The screen turns bright white, then returns to the oil tanker. A yellow wall, larger than the ship, has been added to the scene. The wall's appearance causes a wave to crash over the ship, waving the humanoid overboard. The screen fills with bubbles, and the words, The Book of Tamlin, and Start Game appear overhead on the bubbles. The significance of this animated sequence, as well as the title, The Book of Tamlin, if any, is currently unknown. When a player chooses Start Game, the title screen fades into an image of a cluttered room. The user is presented with a series of tasks, directing them to find objects hidden in the room image. The allotted time to find every object in a scene ranges from 1 to 12 minutes. Once the user finds every object in a scene, a set of doors appear on screen, and the player must choose one to progress in the game. The game continues through a random number of screens, labeled from 7 to 43. Eventually, if the user fails to find all objects in a scene within the time limit, the next scene will be an empty room. The words, you found out everything there is to find about the house, now all you have left to find is the way out appear on the screen. At this point, the game ends and cannot be replayed by the same user. The actual length of the game appears to vary from player to player, but even players who appear to win the game, always finding all hidden objects within the time limit, will eventually be shown the same end screen and receive the same message. As strange as the game is, what happens next is even stranger. Within 72 hours of completing the game, whether a player has ostensibly won or lost, the player will encounter the final room from the game in real life. They will find that some ordinary door, possibly in their home or workplace, no longer leads to the room it should lead to, but instead leads to the empty room from the end of the game. If someone other than the player attempts to pass through the door, they will find themselves not in the empty room from the game, but instead in the room that the door normally leads to. If the player passes through the door, though, they disappear into the empty room. Any tracking devices cease to transmit after the user passes through the doorway. The Foundation currently has no idea who or what is behind SCP-1590 or how the game manages to access users' memories. It's also not clear what purpose the game solves, whether it's intended as a therapy device to help subjects work through hidden trauma or as an instrument of justice to punish wrongdoing. Either way, you might want to make sure you have a clean conscience before you download any new mysterious games for your phone. You never know when you might find yourself confronting the Book of Tamlin. If you want to support our important mission here at Dr. Bob, check out the Dr. Bob Patreon and become a junior researcher today. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-024, Game Show of Death, for another tale of a game that takes the fun out of play. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives.